Welcome back. I'm talking to Andrew Johnson about Apollo astronauts. Okay, Andrew, so Dr. Edgar Mitchell's son clearly says in that clip, uh, shall we phone the CIA and have them waxed? What does that mean? You tell me. It's not an expression I'm familiar with. We can, we can speculate what it means. It doesn't sound very complimentary. Does it mean, you know, um, we, we have, the, have their memory erased? Does it mean we'll have them killed? So uh, it's, it's a pretty safe bet then, based on that evidence and based on the Brewster Palmer evidence, that Dr. Edgar Mitchell is working for the CIA. In, or some version thereof, yes. Right. Uh, as some kind of operative. As I, right. would, I would say he is, yes. Right. And you're convinced he didn't walk on the moon? Correct. Right. I am, yes. Right. Okay. Well, the people may not be, but I am. Right. We've got some clips here of um, Bart Sabrell approaching Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong. And you believe in UFOs? No, you believe we've been visited by UFOs? Why do no, you I want don't. to believe this? I know for, I know for a fact. I've had this analyzed. And to this... This is the window, and you're in, in a stage by an atomic clock at the Goldstone tracking station. This is the tape. Well, you're that talking to the wrong guy. Why don't you there. talk to the administrator at NASA? We're passengers. We're, we're guys going on a flight. We're I, know not for, I know for a fact. You really like to you You're the one who said you walked on the moon when you didn't. Calling the kettle black if I ever thought of it. Saying I misrepresented myself. Get away myself. from me. You're a coward and a liar and a thief. Mr. Armstrong, Bart Sibrel, ABC Digital. Wanted to give you the opportunity to swear on the Bible that you walked on the moon. Will you put your left hand on the Bible and swear to God that you walked on the moon? Gentlemen. Mr. Sibrel. Yes? <clears throat> if you really walked on the moon, why would you not do that? So why don't you just put the end to the record in the argument and put your hand on the Bible, <clears throat> swear to God you walked on the moon. Mr. Sibrel, yeah. knowing you, that's probably a fake Bible. Really? Well, no, it's a real Bible. You have the opportunity to have $5,000. The meeting is not open. Well, you have $5,000 cash. You can give it to charity if you swear on the Bible that you Please. walked on the moon. Please I have the tape. That'd be fine. Why don't you I swear won't. to... Why not? Why won't you do it? So why don't you put your hand on the Bible and swear to God that you walked yeah, on the moon? Mr. Seibel has made a fool of himself in front of the world. Mr. Seibel, you do not deserve answers. Neil Armstrong is visibly shaken by that. He does not want to swear on the Bible that he, that he landed on the moon. What do you take from that, Andrew? Well, I mean, again, you know, it's, it's more speculative, but yeah. it's, it, it, you look, looking at the body language and the reactions, unfortunately, you know, there is a conf confrontational situation, particularly with Neil Armstrong, where he's, Sabrell has burst into this business meeting mm -hmm. that Armstrong's addressing. So it's not an ideal... Mm situation mm -hmm. you know to get a kind of honest statement from um you know so you can see that that it's it's not a great situation now the the, the clip with armstrong sabrell you know i've heard him interviewed and he regrets having done that now right. he regrets that aldrin punched him in the face and so on it got to that he, he, he but i think at the time he was so annoyed he was so you know well, he, he thought he'd been conned by... Yeah, he so felt so conned by these guys right. that he, he felt he had to go up and tell them, you know, I'm, you know, he says, you, 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 you said you walked on the, the moon, you didn't, you know, and, and Aldrin's uh, accusing Sabrell of slimy journalism. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, Sabrell thinks, well, you're accusing me of slimy journalism. What about you being slimy all these days say, saying you went to the moon and you didn't, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so, so it, it's very uncomfortable to watch, and unfortunately that discomfort um, takes away a little bit from you know, the, being able to sort of evaluate it dispassionately and look at what's actually being done and said and, and this mm. sort of thing. So, uncomfortable to watch, but I think nevertheless a good documentation of statements from the astronauts right. about what they claim to have done. Now, um, I actually think they're covering up other things, um, not just that perhaps the rockets weren't capable of getting to and from the moon. Um, now, Buzz Aldrin has made quite a few statements um, in the media regarding um, a monolith on Phobos and the fact that he says that the Apollo mission was followed to the moon by a UFO. Right. So let's just take a look at that clip now. There is something out there that um, was close enough to be observed and uh, what could it be? Travelling alongside Apollo 11 was a mysterious object like this one filmed on a later mission. If the object wasn't part of Apollo's rocket, it could be only one thing, a UFO. 
Mike decided he thought he could see it in the telescope, and he was able to do that. And when, when it was in one position, that it had a series of ellipses. Now, obviously, the three of us were not going to uh, blurt out, hey, Houston, we got something moving alongside of us, and uh, we don't know what it is. You know, can you tell us what it is? We weren't about to do that because uh, we know that uh, the, those transmissions would be heard by all sorts of people and uh, uh, who knows what somebody would have demanded that we uh, turn back because of aliens or whatever the reason is. So we, we didn't do that, but we did uh, decide, we, we just cautiously ask uh, Houston where, how far away was the S-4B? Apollo 11, Houston, the S-4B is about 6,000 nautical miles from you now, over. And a few moments later, why well, they came back and said something like it was 6,000 miles away because of the maneuver. So we, we really didn't think we were looking at something that far away. So we decided uh, that after a while of watching it, uh, we, it was time to go to sleep and not to talk about it anymore until we came back in, in debriefing. Okay, so clear statements there from Buzz Aldrin that uh, there was something else other than just the Apollo craft. Uh, now, he was, after that documentary was made, I believe he appears on a radio station and he seems to be backtracking on what he said. He's asked if this was the case and he changes the subject essentially. I have been uh, uh, just uh, always interested in extraterrestrial life, and uh, and I, I just I don't know if it's true or not, but I had heard that someone was saying that you had seen a UFO. NASA said don't say anything about it, and we might as well get it from the horse's mouth. Buzz, did you see anything unusual up there? Well, you know, a guy uh, by the name of Charles Berlitz wrote something about the Roswell incident, and to establish his credibility, he had a little table in the front of his book which attempted to take advantage of uh, alleged observations of people, of uh, unusual sightings, and, and he specifically referred to Anglia TVs reported this, that, that had been cited by somebody else, that uh, Neil and I saw some uh, green things, green creatures. <clears throat> well, this kind of spoiled my credibility and, uh, and a lot of uh, other people. So uh, I decided to take him to court and uh, sue him because he was uh, uh, repeating phrases that were inaccurate. Uh. He's not done the right kind of, uh, well, we won the suit. Uh, and and I, you know, hopefully it would uh, cause a few people to be a little bit more careful in, in how they uh, try and treat trusted servants uh, of our government and of our people to to tell the truth. Um, and uh, I, I I just feel that uh, it's a little irresponsible of people uh, to, uh, especially after so many years. To, to bring up subjects that uh, that have been explained rather thoroughly, um, especially uh, in uh, in our case in debriefings. All right, so he's clearly avoiding talking about being followed by a UFO. Uh, well, he, I, I say he flip flops on this show. On the one hand, he cla you know he claims to have seen something that followed them, mm -hmm. and then in the coast to coast clip, it's like he says, I'm, you know, people have tried to misquote me about seeing you know extraterrestrial things All right. you know so it's like he's flip-flopping on the issue right. now there are a number of other people who alleged to have seen um, things on the moon uh, one of them is Carl Wolf who spoke at the Disclosure Project conference we've shown this clip several times before on Rich Planet because I find it a very compelling clip this uh, engineer Carl Wolf is trying to r repair a piece of photographic equipment and he is shown images of things on the moon so let's just take a look at it I was interested in how the whole process functioned how the data got from the lunar orbiter to the laboratory I asked the young man if he described the process to me he did about 30 minutes into the process he said to me um, in a very distressed way um, by the way we've discovered a base on the backside of the moon and then he proceeded to put photographs down in front of me and clearly in these photographs were structures, uh, mushroom-shaped buildings, 
and towers. And at, at that point, I was very concerned because I knew we were working on compartmentalized security. He had breached security, and I was actually frightened at that moment. And I did not question him any further. She was approached by someone who was in quarantine with the Apollo astronauts. Right. Um, who said, and the astronauts had told this person who'd come to her um, that there was a base found on the moon. Another incident, I knew someone in quarantine with the Apollo astronauts. He told me that the Apollo astronauts saw craft on the moon when we landed. And that is what he told me. And he also was afraid, he said, that the astronauts are told to keep this quiet. They're not allowed to talk about it. He was a psychiatrist. Right. Uh, and he worked on the Apollo project. Right. And he was involved in the quarantine of the astronauts. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't the, nothing to do with them um, quarantining from viruses or bacteria. From information. It was the information yeah. and you know, um, making sure that the astronauts were OK. And, uh, and he said that uh, the astronauts had told him that about the base, was the base on the moon. And I will testify under oath before Congress that what I'm saying is the truth. Okay, so claims of bases on the moon, claims of other craft on the moon. Um, what do you make of that? Well, again, but, you know, winter is just more of speculation, but with a bit of, you know, bit of testimony. Mm -hmm. uh, I also think that Carl Wolf is, is telling the truth mm -hmm. about seeing this yep. photograph of the base on the moon. Uh, and then uh, as we were discussing earlier, uh, you know, whether we'll get time to get show this particular clip or not, I'm not sure, but the William Hamilton clip mm -hmm. from 1998, where mm -hmm. he was at a conference in MUFON, mm -hmm. LA, and I've shown this clip many times in presentations I've done because I think it overlaps between the testimony about the secret space program mm -hmm. and what's going on on Mars. There seems to be some overlap with, with, with this thing that uh, William Hamilton uh, tells you, this, this account that he, mm -hmm. t he comes out with. Um, so uh, th there are a number of you know areas um i mean i i have mixed feelings about the stories of stuff on the moon i haven't seen a lot of good images i think i've seen more interesting images coming from mars about stuff on mars than i have from the moon mm -hmm. john lear is a big you know uh, uh has a uh, sort of big statement about the bases being on the moon and there being mining operations and he claims he's got pictures of them and they're on his website he even has a website called the living moon dot com mm -hmm. as you're probably aware and I think there's some interesting stuff on there, which, in, in all honesty, I haven't studied in great detail. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but some of some of the stuff that I've seen is is clearly, you know, not not correct. Um, there was a, an image I saw a few years ago, which was claimed to be a moon base, and it's actually part of a, a Disney film, a segment of a Disney right. film. So still from that, yep. and that circulated around as a moon base. So. Well, when I interviewed Timothy Good, um, he did claim that. Um, a German doctor had spoken to Neil Armstrong at a NASA conference and been overheard making similar statements. So let's just take a look at the clip of Tim Good. Also, from a friend of mine, a former lady who worked in MI6, she met Neil Armstrong in Italy and uh, he confirmed to her, she'd overheard a conversation of him talking to a German doctor at a NASA conference and then she confronted Armstrong with this information and he admitted yes there were craft on the moon when they landed and uh, they were very frightened by it and they felt threatened. <laughs> 